What should I do in my first year of college if I have no prior knowledge of coding and I want to work for top product based companies like Google, Microsoft, Amazon, etc, etc, someday. I know it's very overwhelming when you join college and you are in a first semester surrounded by a couple of classmates who already has some idea about programming languages and they know the basics of coding. So you kind of feel left out. Trust me, I have also gone through the same journey as yours. So in this video, I am going to talk about step by step exactly the things which you need to focus on in your first two semesters, that is the first year of college. Hey everyone, I am Riddhi Gatta. I'm a software engineer at Google, having a prior experience at Amazon and Salesforce. I have passed out of a tier three college in Calcutta. And in this video, I am going to talk about all the things that you need to learn in your first year of college. Now let's take a step back and let's say you don't know any programming language at all. Okay, so the first thing which I would personally recommend you and which changed my outlook towards programming is to learn C programming language. I know a lot of people will tell you to go and learn Python, JavaScript, Java, etc, etc. But in my opinion and based on my experience and all the senior engineers I have talked to, they all would suggest C because C is said to be the mother of all programming languages. It's a low level programming language. So you would have a deeper understanding of how the computer works, how the memory model works, about pointers, arrays, strings, etc, etc. This will make you a better programmer in the long run and any language you pick after learning C properly, it would be a cake work for you. You will experience this on your own. So after you have learned C really well and you are going to learn other programming languages, come to this video and thank me. Because you yourself will figure out the difference. Okay, now let's take a look at the topics that you need to cover in C. Starting with variables and data types, understanding loops and conditionals, understanding functions, arrays and strings, pointers, structures and dynamic memory allocation, and also file management in C. In your first semester, 99% of these colleges is going to teach you these things in C. There would be one separate subject for this, but I would recommend you to learn at your own pace. The reason is what I've generally seen in my college is this tend to spend a lot of time in the initial part. Like they will spend a lot of time helping you to learn variables, arrays, strings, etc, etc. And as a result, at the end of the semester, okay, when you have very limited time, but you have to cover the entire syllabus, then they would either miss out or they would rush over to the very important topics like files is never taught properly in any of the colleges according to my experience. That is why I would highly recommend you. It's okay if you follow the college curriculum and the pace, but it's always better if you learn it at your own pace. Six months, six proper months of practice and learning would help you become conversant with the C programming language and help you to understand the basics. Parallel, if you have some more time and you have a bit of interest, learn the basics of HTML and CSS. Okay, Don't go too deep into learning HTML and CSS. Just understand how web works, what are static web pages and it's okay. You can skip JavaScript for now. I have something planned for you in the upcoming semesters. And also don't worry, none of the top tech engineers really know CSS that well. We are always hustling to learn it and somehow get it work. I will tell you more about it in some of my future videos, but for now, you don't need to go really deep into learning CSS and HTML. Otherwise, you would lose the interest in web development because web development is way, way more than HTML and CSS. Okay, so these are the things primarily you need to focus in semester one, the first six months. I'm making it very easy for you so that you don't really get distracted by the jargons of AI, full stack, DevOps, cloud, etc, etc. I know you would be hearing a lot of these jargons. A lot of people would be telling you that, hey, the jobs lie there. Don't waste your time learning C, but just trust me and have faith in me that if you learn the fundamentals really well, that will really hold you in good stead. Obviously, you're going to learn all of the upcoming technologies, AI, ML, and I'm going to guide you and tell you what exactly to learn. And it's an ever changing landscape as well. So at the end of the four years, you don't know what's going to really work out for you. Okay. But what will definitely be there always with you is the CS fundamentals and C programming, understanding and learning a programming language really well is just the founding pillars. So don't ignore it. Don't get distracted and don't really pressurize yourself a lot. Okay. Just stick to the basics. First semester, learn C language really well. And if you're interested, if you have some more time to devote, then focus on HTML, CSS and that are very, very basics of it. Now your first semester, exams will be done. You will get your first winter break. Enjoy this time to hang out with your friends and have a lot of fun. This is also the time where you will make a lot of friends. Your bond would get stronger, but it's also the time to level up. Now, by this time, you know very well that to get into this top product based companies, 
DSA, data structures and algorithms is the full form of DSA. That is very important. Okay. So data structures, understanding data structures is the building block of it. So basically you can think of it in this way that you use data structures to solve an algorithmic problem, right? So an algorithm, if you want to implement an algorithm, if you want to code an algorithm, you use data structures. So to solve or to get into algorithmic problems, right? You first have to learn data structures really well. I would tell you all the data structures that are very, very important and you need to learn. So I already told you about arrays and strings that you have already learned by now in C. So those are also data structures. Now on top of it, you will learn linked list. You will learn stacks and queues, priority queues, hash tables, trees, heaps and basics of graphs like how do you represent a graph in an adjacency matrix and an adjacency list. This should be enough and by this time you might not understand that what are the uses of these data structures. Hang on with me, you would soon understand it but at least try to learn the implementation of these data structures in C and when you implement these data structures in C, your understanding and grasp about pointers is going to increase by leaps and bounds and anyway pointers will be an important concept that will be asked in your semesters also during your placements so this will hold you in good stead and later on when you would go to abstracted out programming languages like python which is built on top of c then things would be very easy for you to grasp now if this is done i think it will take you a good two months okay to learn this so you would be at the end of your mid semester of semester two i would say just after the midterm of semester two okay now when you are here, what you need to do is you need to go and start basics of problem solving. It's like pick easy problems from platforms like HackerRank, HackerEarth, CodeChef, CodeForces, right? CodeForces might be a bit tough, but I would suggest HackerRank would be a good start or maybe the easy problems of CodeChef. Here, when you start with the problem solving, you need to apply your logic building and your sometimes your algorithms, okay? And here you will see these data structures in action, okay? I will make a separate video on how you can get good with DSA and problem solving and logic building. Let me know down in comments if you need such a video because I have started from scratch and when I started, I had zero logic building and problem solving capabilities, okay? So yeah, I would be more than happy to make a video on that. It's one of my favorite topics. But now coming back to this video, now actually when you try to implement the algorithms that will lurk around your head, by algorithms I mean the basic logic to solve those uh, coding problems, you will see the data structures in action. Now you will see to implement a specific problem, you need to take the help of a priority queue data structure. You will see that if you use priority queue, this will solve the problem fairly easy. But now you will think, hey, will I go and build a priority queue from scratch? Is that even possible? And that's where STL comes into the picture. Standard template library, I think, is the full form. So STL is a C++ library. Now you will ask me, Hiridhi, you didn't tell me to learn C++. I only know C. So how will I learn C++? Don't worry. C++ is just an extension of C. Okay. Plus it has the oops part, but I would recommend you not to delve into the oops part as of now. A, it will be kind of complex and it will throw you away from your main thing of problem solving. And the second thing is, I would recommend you to learn OOPS from, from Java, okay? Not the C++ OOPS part because it's fairly complex and not very beginner friendly. So we will learn Java later in the later semesters. Again, we'll see that later. But for now, all I want you to do is just check the differences between C and C++. It's not that hard, okay? If there are few basic differences, the rest of the syntax are fairly simple and all the concepts, the underlying concepts are very similar. So within, I think, a week, you will learn one more language that is C++ and then I would recommend you to learn STL. You will get a lot of videos in YouTube. It will be hardly a one hour video where you will see that how can you use inbuilt priority queues? How can you use inbuilt linked list? How can you use inbuilt data structures like maps and sets? Okay. So far you have built it by scratch. Okay. Now you will actually use inbuilt data structures that someone else has built for you and that will help you to solve the problems like the coding problems that you would find on this coding platforms like hacker and hacker etc okay now you can ask me that uh, if i'm using this inbuilt data structures why do i need to learn these data structures and code it on my own right why am i spending the first two months of the second semester doing that because you have to understand internally how this works okay and once you have understood it how it works then it's very difficult to code it out every time for every problem so therefore we are using this inbuilt data structures okay and just to give you a sneak peek in one of my interviews at amazon okay i was asked a problem where we had to use priority queues to solve that problem i solved that problem and at the end the interviewer told me to implement priority queue from scratch so sometimes the interviewer also checks 
right? That whether you know these data structures in hand or you're just using it as a black box. Okay, so now once you are done with this, I think you'll be already at the end of semester two. While doing this, if you're getting a bit bored, right? Parallelly, what you can do is you can also start learning JavaScript because you have already learned C. So JavaScript is just another programming language. So it will not take much time to understand the basics. So in JavaScript, you will mostly learn variables, functions, arrays, objects, and DOM manipulation. And once you know the basics of JavaScript, you can start building small front-end projects like a to-do list, a calculator, and a notes app. This should be enough. So you already know the basics of HTML, CSS from your first semester. Just learn a basics of JavaScript. Again, it will be very easy to learn JavaScript because you already know a programming language, okay? So see, first program, learning a first programming language will take you six months okay properly but the subsequently the time taken to learn a new programming language would be very less hardly 15 to 20 days so you can easily learn it although there are a lot, a lot of other things that comes into picture when we talk about javascript that is the asynchronous programming and everything we'll come to that later but no need to do it as of now okay just start with building basic front-end apps like basic javascript apps and that will really help you a lot alternatively you can also spend some time learning git and github the github commands it will also take you max to max two weeks to learn it and put it into action start creating a github repository and start pushing your projects and whatever coding problems you're solving over there so at the end of first year that is your first two semesters the things which you have to mandatorily learn is one programming language preferably c okay then learn C++, which would hardly take one or two weeks to learn the syntaxes, right? Then learn STL and so start solving coding problems from the platforms that I mentioned. Alternatively, you should be conversant with HTML, CSS and basics of JavaScript and you should have some basic front-end projects ready at your disposal and also learn Git and GitHub and push your projects and your coding problems to GitHub which is a which should be a public coding portfolio so my final set of advice is first year as i said is always about building a base be slow and steady don't need to rush so that you have a solid foundation at the end of four years no need to run behind jargons like ai ml gen ai etc etc don't worry i will also make a roadmap video on that as well and if you are done with this and now in your second year come back in comments and ask for a second year college roadmap and i will build it from here okay these roadmaps are based on the experiences that I have gone through and what has worked for me, right? And feel free to tailor me uh, some of these uh, roadmaps and things which I asked you to do, but the basics, the foundations should be this only, okay? Having said that, if you want a second year roadmap, again, put it down in comments. I would be more than happy to make it as a follow-up uh, uh, to this video. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel because these numbers motivate me a lot to make such videos for you in future. And that's it. Thank you so much. Let me know down in comments if you have any doubts. I will see you in some other video. Till then, stay safe and goodbye.